real dangers involving astral projection in the New Age world. What is astral projection is quite complicated to explain, but that's not exactly where the focus is completely in this story. But, in this truth rather, the truth of astral projection is, is that it is highly dangerous. And I would like to warn you all now against doing such practices. I'm not saying that because I'm trying to dissuade you because I don't care for you. Rather, I do care for you quite a lot. And I was heavily into the New Age world. I was involved in the New Age practices for a decade. And one of the things that I progressed into eventually was astral projection. And in a nutshell, it's where you can meditate and you can, in essence, empty your body of your spirit for it. So go in other planes of creation on other planets. I explored many places and at first it felt wonderful. But the truth of the matter is, it was all just a lore. It was all just something to coax me into something that was highly dangerous. And the last time I engaged in astral projection has been some years ago, but I'll never forget it. And I want to share with you this experience because I do not wish any of you to go through this because it is downright terrifying. The last time that I engaged in the practice of astral projection, I found myself exploring another world. And I went to this planet that was dark and it was gray and there was caves. And I was standing and looking at all the stars and all the beauty of everything. And it seemed safe. It seemed like any other time when I would engage in meditation practices and astral projection practices. But all of a sudden, this creature came out of nowhere, blindsided me, and threw me on my back and tackled me. I was able to look into its eyes and I saw nothing but evil and I was terrified. I could not breathe. It had its hand on my neck and I didn't know what to do. I couldn't speak. I was absolutely terrified. I wasn't strong and I was highly weak. This thing, it looked like the devil, it looked like Satan. It looked ugly, but just as I was about to pass out, all of a sudden, I heard a strong voice where I was weak. This voice that came out of nowhere behind the demon said, she's mine. Took him like a puppy, like a little puppy on the back of the neck and threw him across the planet's ground. I rose up on my elbows and I watched everything this man was doing. His back was turned to me the whole time. And he extinguished this creature into dust in his hand. It was just a little pile of dust. And I could only look up at this man in awe. And why he said, she's mine. And that gave me pause for thought that I had gone way too far. And I would very much like to save you from going too far into new age practices because it can lead to these things and see the word of god it's not just simply a book like any other book that you would buy the bible is the living word and if you read in my test or if you listen to my testimony rather i did not read the entirety of the bible into until 2019 at that point, I was only, I was 37 years old. I had read several books throughout my life, and I'd only picked three bits and pieces of the Bible, and I only ever read enough of it to try and reaffirm that God would have absolutely no problem with me having um, divination experiences or astral projection sort of experiences, meditation, yoga, 
all things to try and get you to go to a higher state of consciousness. And somehow in my mind, pre-salvation, what I count as my true salvation time, this point, it was, I was always trying to twist the word so that I could read it without conscience about myself. The truth of the matter, though, is I had gone far too far. And I was in a place where I was weak. But in my weakness, God is stronger. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I had heard the word throughout my life, but I never really dug down deep into it because, as I said in my full testimony, I was angry at God for decades, for a long time. And I was so enthralled with twisting his word. But the truth of the matter is, is I was wrong. And I repented of that. You see, idolatry is whenever you form a God in your own image. God created us in his image. But the true God, when you seek his wisdom, when you ask him to help you, he will help you. He knows his sheep. He knows who is his, and he loves us, and he will be there to protect us. As it says in Romans 8, 38 through 39, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I was dead in my sins. I was completely dead. I wasn't just lost. I was dead because I had the gravity of breaking that commandment of making a God in my own image. That was, it was like a chain reaction. I'd not only broke that commandment, but I was also blaspheming against God. I was lying. <laughs> I was deceiving myself. But Jesus knows his sheep and his sheep know his voice. In my weakness, the Lord saved me from that terrifying experience. And it has taken root in my mind. And I want to ensure in this video that you understand that the Lord does love you. And happiness is not in the things of this world. And there is no way logically possible that you can serve two masters. I know I, I was there for 10 years. I attempted to do that. But as it says in Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 24, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing look at the birds of the air they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not of more value than they and which of you by being anxious can can add a single hour to his span of life and why are you anxious about clothing Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet, I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Now see, I read this passage for you because... It is important to understand that, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The best way to know who God is, is to ask him, to search for him wholeheartedly, wanting to know who he is. 
don't follow me, don't follow Susan or Jill's women's ministry. I am just, I'm not the one that can offer you salvation. Jesus Christ, through our Lord Jesus Christ, is the way we are reconciled with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Trinity, one God, one divine essence into three distinct persons. Okay? When you seek God through Jesus Christ and the work he did on the cross, he has already saved us. He's already, he came down here as a perfect man. He was perfect and he is perfect. He died on a cross for our sins. All we must do is repent and repentance is changing our mind, changing our mind about things like astral projection and new age beliefs. I'm not saying this to be harsh or to hurt anyone. I'm saying it because I do honestly love you. And I know that the truth is because I, I can feel and I know that God is alive and he is the Alpha and the Omega. So what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? It is the message of the good news of salvation, the word of truth offered to mankind by grace through faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross. It is a message not only of eternal life, but one that encompasses the total plan of God to redeem people from the ravishes of sin, death, Satan, and the curse that now covers the earth. And when you are a child of God, and when you are a sheep, of God's. He will leave the 99. And if you're lost, if you're that one sheep that's lost, he will go find you. There's no sheep of his that he will ever lose. So put your faith in him, not in these man-made idols and things that we try to form in our own mind. The word, the Holy Bible, the living word, it changes us. We do not change God. And to try and convince myself as I did, to try and convince myself that God would be okay with me incorporating other beliefs of false gods into worship with him is completely erroneous and it is to be avoided. And I say this, as I said, because I do honestly care for you and I love you and if you would like to know more about my own specific testimony, I will link a card here for you to listen to. And if you want to know the true gospel in less than 30 seconds, the video is also here for you. I pray that this helps someone. And I know that this has been a hard truth to hear. But it is important that it's known because when we die, we go to God. Our spirit goes to God. That is a reality. And if you, you can't wait till then to try and repent, it is now. The time is now to come to repentance. Jesus is at the door. There's going to be a time when there's going to be a famine all around the earth. But it's not going to be a famine of food and water. It's going to be a famine of the word of God. People will seek but they will not be able to find it. As it says in Amos chapter 8, verse 11, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. That is a terrifying thing to consider, because our hope, our love, our faith is in Jesus Christ. I pray that this helps you. I pray that the Holy Spirit moves and uses this, uses this video as he sees fit. I pray that God blesses you and may the grace of Jesus Christ be with you always. And remember, look to the cross, look to Jesus. He's always there. All you need to do is ask him. Fill yourself with the love of God. Of course, I cannot tell you what to do and what not to do, but I can advise you to steer clear of astral projection and run away from it as far as you possibly can. May the grace of Jesus be with you all. And 
If you would like me to pray for you, you can message me privately, and I will be happy to do so. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I will help you as best as I can. But remember, follow Jesus for salvation. And look at the Bible your own self and read in the Bible for your own self. Not just what I or anybody else tells you. Seek God. Seek his wisdom. May the grace of Jesus be with you all always. 